Hello everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So today's video, if you guys do or don't know, we are gonna be reacting to an MLM I don't think I've ever touched before on this channel. We're gonna be covering Madeira. So we have not talked about this MLM company and we have an actual opportunity Zoom call that we're gonna be going through, which is perfect because I love those as my introduction videos, either they're deep dives or Zoom calls because I'm able to thoroughly go through exactly how it is being marketed off to you and with all the information about the company right there. And I'm able to kind of go through and talk about my thoughts, discuss maybe the behavioral patterns when it comes to the individuals promoting it to you and so much more. And so with that, let's get into today's video. Before we hop in though, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button down below. My vlog channel, podcast and merch are in the description below. And now let's get into it. So this is called a Madeira Global Opportunity Call. So it's 36 minutes long. I might have to speed it up. I'll make some adjustments if I need to in the editing, but let's go. I'm um, in the world of business for 12 years. So like I said, my name's Beth, I'm 30 years old. I was going to say 31 yet there, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, I'm a mom to three. Um, and my previous business before coming into this world is I'm a salon owner. So my background has always been in hair and beauty. Um, I've had my own traditional businesses. I've actually run three um, online businesses, two six figures equating to over seven figures. I've done absolutely incredibly well. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for this industry. And I definitely wouldn't have achieved everything that I've achieved if it wasn't for the career that I chose to do, which is be in the space of online. There's a reason for that, guys. You know, back back when the internet took over, everything took over, shops started to close, everything was done online. And there's a massive market there, you know. I know there's a lot of stories when it comes to network marketing. We are very, very different, which I will cover in a second. Um, but you just can't deny the amount of people that earn a lot of money online. You know what, let's see if we can clock if she's saying this correctly. Okay, well, okay, perfect. So I found the 2021 income disclosure statements. I think this is a wonderful way to start off with a company. It says all income is earned on the sale of Madeira products. No benefit or bonuses are paid or received solely through recruiting or enrolling other social marketers. No earnings are guaranteed from mere participation in the compensation plan. Okay, so it says commissions. Why the fuck is that a rate? <laughs> I think right here that should give you a big old red flag if it says the earn ranges starts at a cent to $200 that they have to make that a range yikes but it says a cent to $200 monthly average commission is 53.60 percentage of active social marketers is 21 percent percentage of total commissions earned would be 64.51 percent so then it goes to the next rank which is monthly average is 350 dollars six percent of active social marketers are there and 17.56 from what I've personally seen if you have a bunch of people again who are making maybe a hundred dollars and the one person makes sixty thousand that is going to drastically change how the average can look, which may, in my opinion, make the opportunity more enticing to you. Whereas if you show the median, which I personally think is more accurate, you're going to see, oh, the majority of people are barely making $50. Oh, shit. You know, 5360, it looks like $643.20 on average for the entire year. Sounds like what she's saying is not very true unless she's referring to only the top percentage of people, which that, that would be true then. So I chose this business three months ago. I actually left a huge business. I left a huge, huge, huge business about six months, six years ago, sorry, in order to pursue something new. However, things change, people outgrow, and I'm not, I'm not scared of change. Um, and I got my eye caught to this business only three months ago. So for me to make a big move was because I saw something very, very special. Um, and if I didn't think that it was going to make a lot of people very, very wealthy, I wouldn't have made that decision. Um, so I'm going to cover the reasons why I chose this business, the reasons how it's already changed my future and so many. I would like to get this out of the way. If she is someone that's a top leader that has moved to this company, right? This is what we see a lot of the times when it comes to leaders that move. There's usually a big reason why it could be because their previous MLM is not working that's why they moved and they brought a downline with them therefore they have a lot of money coming in because they're all considered like new enrollments that could be insane when it comes to the money she can make just from getting involved with the company there's also alleged offers and deals that are given to top leaders so for example I don't know if this has happened or has not happened to her but many times from what I've personally seen is there are deals that are going behind scenes so if there is a top leader that has a big old downline and that uh, this other company really wants them because they could be utilized as a success story that's bringing more people into the company that's making this company a lot more money. There could be sign-on bonuses offered to the said top leader where they can get guaranteed money, a 
kind of a really big sign on bonus, you name it, in order to move people and encourage people to cross over, which is also what we call cross recruiting, which is actually big time no no for majority of companies in general that's violating their policies. So it's like, we're, it's playing with fire. So I don't trust the fact that she's moving to really benefit a lot of her downline because at the end of the day, usually there's a reason why the top leader leaves because most top leaders are not going to, in my opinion, leave an MLM if they are making really good money. You know what I mean? They're not gonna leave that safer safety or comfort, but if they see the grass is greener over here, maybe a possible sign-on bonus, et cetera, they may hop on over for those reasons. People that have only been in the business for a short period of time. So like I said to you, I've literally this morning, 5 a.m., I flew back from Greece. Um, I got flew out on the Thursday evening. I've spent all of the weekend with the highest paid earners in Europe. Um, and we've had so much fun, like the community, the owner was there, the corporate team were there. They completely treated us like royalty. We've been whisked around the whole of Athens. Um, it's just been absolutely incredible. So I'm going to take you through the business presentation and then I'm going to ask some of the girls to jump on. OK, so as you can see, guys, you know, some of my story, which I've just spoken about. Obviously built businesses now for the past 12 years and my passion and motivation has always been to help people, um, especially mums, you know, mums that struggle to kind of find their way, find who they are. Um, I think That's the big problem is a lot of moms and single moms, maybe moms that are stay-at-home moms, that's a big old demographic that MLMs love is people who may be feeling alone, maybe be struggling. I think from what I've just personally looked into, a lot of parents just don't get enough like support when it comes to maybe like postpartum and just so much more and that really irks me. And so that could be a very vulnerable demographic. And what we've seen is a very specific vulnerable demographic that a lot of MLMs like because that's a very easy way to get sucked in. You are far more possible to get sucked into an MLM if you are vulnerable in an unstable position, feeling lonely, et cetera. And that's very easily how people get you. And that's really heartbreaking to say the least. When you've had children, most people will agree. You kind of lose yourself. Um, other things starting to come into play. You know, you start, you lack it, you lack in confidence. You're like, can I do this? You then have to put your children into childcare. Your childcare then gets covered by most of your wage. It's just a vicious circle. So for anybody that is really serious about earning money, I am there to help support and guide, but we have got some incredible people in this business. This company actually has the most success in the whole of the industry. We've got people in eight figures, seven figures, and hundreds of people that are earning six figures. So there's not just a handful of people. This business is absolutely huge. And I will take you through it now. So she's, I know we're pausing this a lot, but this is a good amount of information being put in front of you, okay? So when it comes to my handy dandy little chart that I talk about pyramid schemes, unethical companies, you name it, it's pretty much saying that there's ways of making this kind of money, giving the illusion that you could be a six-figure earner, five-figure earner, et cetera, is really false and untrue. Most people don't make this money. So already out from the gates, there's not a proper disclaimer because if you were at least gonna say, hey, I've made this much. However, that's not really realistic, but this is what it's going to take to do it. I would at least respect that more. However, there's not realistic expectations set. So people are joining and thinking, wow, I can make some money. And now again, I would like to also reiterate, six figures is not always somebody's goal. And that is very valid. If people's had different levels of success in many different areas of your life and in different industries. So for example, my perspective is, is I think people should at the bare minimum be able to make a little extra money and not be in the negatives, but majority of people lose money, which is a big red flag to me because if anything, yes, I would love for someone to be able to have extra shopping money, extra grocery money, money to go towards gas, you name it. But when most people don't even make that, that's when I got a problem. So why us? Over 180 products. Now, I don't know whether anybody's going to relate with this, but for me personally, I think over the last few years, I've really started to think about toxins and chemicals. What am I putting into my body? What products am I choosing? Is it harmful? What am I using on my children? In every aspect, bathroom ranges, household ranges, foods, I've become really, really conscious over the fact of toxins and chemicals that we're consuming on a daily basis. Now, our ethos in this company is clean living. So there are no toxins. And I would love to have a conversation about greenwashing. Okay, so here's the thing. I love trying new health and wellness products and there's so much out there. Not everything you need. There's some that you can try. Just why not? You know, there's some that I have in my everyday routine that I love. Oh my God, I 
love it. However, I do think that there's a very unhealthy narrative. There we go. Narrative that is being run with when it comes to certain products. So I don't know when the hell this started, but the conversation about how a lot of products are dangerous because of chemicals. Water is a chemical, bestie. I don't know if you knew that, but water is a chemical. We are made of chemicals. So if our chemicals all around us, that doesn't inherently mean it's bad. When we think of chemicals, sometimes we think about like acid burning through a table and that's not inherently true. There are so many chemicals that make up our world today, our bodies, things that we take in every single day, and they are not inherently dangerous. There are going to be things that are dangerous. And yes, we can acknowledge that, but I don't like this immediate arguing and uh, like discussion and uneducated discussion, mind you, saying, uh, focusing on what I take in and these chemicals. Chemicals are not inherently dangerous and not everything that we take in on a regular basis is just automatically horrible for you. Sorry, I'm dumb. I was listening to her and I wasn't like looking at the screen. This is toxic and chemical free. You can't have products chemical free. You're not chemical free. So bestie, if you're not chemically free, I've got news for you. A whole range all the way through from your household products to your bathroom products, to your supplements, um, through your health and wellness, to your hair, to your face, to your absolutely everything. Um, companies award winning for me. And I obviously I don't know who I'm talking to. There's going to be various different people that have many never done network marketing before or social selling, should I say, and people that have been very successful within this industry. Now, for me, one of the biggest reasons that people fail in this industry is because they're constantly in competition with other companies, same products, very similar ingredients, different prices, a lot of people doing it very saturated market. Okay, so I get what she's saying, where she's saying how if there's a lot of people doing MLMs, and there's similar products per MLM, you're probably not going to do well. That's not why I think most people don't do well. No, because a lot of these MLMs, a the majority that I've come across have a dependency on recruitment. So it doesn't even matter what the product is. You're focusing on recruitment. It doesn't matter. Now, if you're mainly product focused and based, then yeah, if there's a lot of saturation there, you're it's not going to go well. But I don't understand how she's saying that Madeira has very like life-changing products when let's be real here what she's talking about the fear-mongering the discussion about clean healthy living that is a concept that is being run right now especially so i don't think you're gonna have a lot of uniqueness with your products babe i don't think so okay so for me i wanted products that were patented um i didn't want to have products whereby i was constantly in competition with other companies selling very similar things so here they're patented, they're made, they're trademarked and no other company, no other business can reformulate or reverse engineer. And that was massive for me. Um, the lucrative pay, the plan is absolutely phenomenal, which is the reason why we've got a lot of success. Um, you can drive both sides of the engine here. So if you don't want to recruit and you don't want to build a team, fine, you can get right to the top of this business through sales and only sales. If you want to build, you can get right to the top. So they've got such a, um, a wide variety of the reasons you know why there's a lot of people here doing really really well um the culture i've actually witnessed that this weekend zero drama guys absolutely zero. i hate babe i hate that argument any community group etc can have drama that doesn't like anything can happen you're humans you're human beings that's just gonna happen sometimes especially in an mlm come on now <laughs> um so again going over 118 non-toxic chemicals Madeira's philosophy is to source the fastest toxin-free ingredients that are biologically compatible with human physiology and chemistry. Madeira avoids over 3,000 toxic ingredients that are found in mainstream products. So again, you know, if you're conscious of things- you Can't say no chemicals, girly. Like that's not how that works. This already so far, it sounds like complete bull and lack of education. And maybe she has not been told. No, <laughs> I cannot. The pay, which I know a lot of you are gonna to wanna to know. One thing I will say, guys, is when you look at a business, don't just look at the different ways of pay. The, the biggest thing that you need to look at is who's successful, how many people are having success, because you can compare so many different comp plans, but they might have the best plan, but is anybody earning? Is it just a handful of people? Or is there a lot of people? You know, don't just look at the different ways of earning, look at the success that surrounds the company. And you it will soon speak. You know, if you see a company and there's two people earning a lot of money, then, you know, you've got to start asking questions. Whereas when you start seeing hundreds of people that are at the top of their game, you know that it works. So we have the sharing bonuses, the selling rewards, the first order bonuses, the unit level, the rank advancements, the team leader and director bonuses, the leadership bonuses, 
bonuses, the lifestyle bonuses and the forum or builder bonuses. So you'll get paid on every sale made. You don't have to spend loads of your money every month. In fact, your customers will make your own qualification to become active. So you don't need to put in your own money every month if you didn't want to. Um, they have an incredible plan. Absolutely incredible. Okay, that was kind of brief, honestly. Like I would expect far more discussion about the money and hopefully they do in the rest of this video but that was like really brief like so let's talk about what she'd said when it comes to how many people are making money so I completely agree with her I think it's important to say hey look at this company how most people are hardly making anything yeah probably avoid it that's kind of what I wanted to do when it comes to the income disclosure statement is looking at the income disclosure statement is really helpful for these exact arguments and from what we saw I did not personally think that was worth it and I don't think people were pulling big as she has said so maybe she has direct downlines that that are really, really successful and that's why or other people that she's around because she is a top leader. Therefore, she's going to be around a bunch of high leaders that are doing good. But if there are a decent amount of top leaders making money, but far, far more that are not doing well, that doesn't change anything. Amy, um, Amy joined the business only a few months ago, leader from a previous company um, and has completely smashed it. So Amy, will you give your story, babe? Is that OK? Yeah, of course. Can you hear me OK? I can hear you, babes. Hey, so first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to be in here. I'm really, really honoured to be here alongside so many amazing speakers. Literally, I've not done this for a while, but I'm so excited to be back in where I love doing best. So my name is Amy Highton. I've been here, I think, just short of eight weeks now. I left behind a huge, huge, huge organisation. I think I had 80,000 people in my last team. I worked... Holy f***ing sh Eight thousand. Where did you come from, Amy? So she said she came from eighty thousand people. So I wonder how many of them transfer over this company. That's nuts. If that doesn't tell you how you can make so much money off of recruitment in people in the industry, wow. So hard in that business. I was traveling up and down the UK. I was hosting Zooms in the middle of the night for my Australia team. I was so passionate and committed to that business. But and and I, I worked so hard that my business was solid. I was so comfortable, but. Is being comfortable enough? No, it is not. Um, the one thing well, most important you have to be is happy. And if you're not happy, then there's no point carrying on. It's, your happiness is the most important thing. So I think I saw this opportunity. I think it was me who actually got in Beth's inbox. And I was like, what is this girl doing? I've followed her for years. For her to come back on this scene, something's massive going on right now. <laughs> so I was like, I've got to just find out what it is. And when I saw it, I was thinking, what are these products? What are these products? Because um, we've all seen the products all over social media. Like, you think, does it work? Does it work? How can it be so cheap if it does so much, you know? So, and then I looked at the products and I see we've got science backing it up. They've got all the clinical studies. Like, this shit works, basically. <laughs> like, there's this proof. The proof's in the pudding. It's there. So, and when I look through the group and see people's testimonials, I'm thinking, wow, uh, this is actually life-changing products. So why would we not want to get involved in that? And another thing is what I think is major is I was do I worked really, really hard in that company, but I just generally feel from the amount of work I put in, I was not paid my worth. Does that make sense? Like um, I was working so, so hard, so, so hard. And I just felt like I, I deserve more. My partner was saying to me, Amy, you need to leave. Like this isn't right. Like one month, I think I did 24 million points and and I didn't even get like a well done or nothing. <laughs> like I've just made you millions and millions of pounds, you know? But yeah, and I just started to feel really deflated, really self-isolated. And I just- Okay, so I think, I'm happy that she's talking about this because I think this is what happens a lot when it comes to top leaders is it's never enough. And you get into a system where sometimes even like, this is why top leaders hop around because the system is not sustainable. And so that's literally why most of the time you don't see top leaders staying at a company for like a really, really long time. A lot of the times they hop around because it's not a very sustainable opportunity and because people get tired of this opportunity they get bored of it. Not as many people want to join. Maybe there's a lot of major legal and technical issues that are happening because of this MLM. And so therefore it's ruining your chance of getting anyone interested. So that's definitely a factor. It's really interesting how she said she wasn't paid enough. Wanted more, wanted more. And the, the leadership here, the support, I'm getting the inboxes of Beth constantly, Gunnar. They are the most supportive people. I, I couldn't pick better people to be a part of the team. And like even John Melton, like this guy is a living legend. He's in my inbox like, Give me your Christian it. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't even know my name. <laughs> I literally, I'm, the support here is just second to none. I feel like I'm part of a team again. 
I'm really buzzing. I'm like, I'm back doing on the live Zooms again. And I'm just loving the products. I'm feeling great. Like, I'm having people stop me in the street, like, Amy, what have you done to your skin? Have you had Botox? I know I've never had Botox. I've never going to need it now. <laughs> but yeah, literally, this of the commissions as well, like my team, on the first commission, we are, we've only been paid once, I, I bear you mind. And I remember messaging one of my girls, Jojo, who's on this call. And I was like, have a look in your back office, babe. And she was like, well, I think I think this is yours. I think this, is, this isn't my commission name. This must be yours. <laughs> and I was like, babe, just, no, let's check the statement. And then was like, oh, my God, this is your first pay. A strong, large, three-figure pay. Like, I've never known that in month one. I've always got, like, 30 quid, no matter what, what company I've been with. So, and you just shows here, like, you really, really do. You, like, the benefits of having a dual comp plan is li literally, I've never known anything like it. Like Bev said earlier, you can get to the top of this company without recruiting one person. Because I know so many people in my old team who were mega, mega, mega sellers, but they just didn't want to recruit. So what they did, so what you can do here is you can just sell them. Bear in mind, you don't have to deal with anyone's products, anyone's money. All you do is send them a link. They order the product, go straight to the house. There you go. There's your commission building up in your back office. It's absolutely life-changing. because it, it So here's my question that I would like to bring up. If Madeira is so similarly built to where you don't need to recruit, then why have the entire system to where that's an option with the MLM stuff? I never understand that because we have companies that have affiliate marketing, right? Now, if we removed the recruitment side of these companies, then it would literally be like built like an, uh, an affiliate marketing company. Of course, you would be buying a starter kit because like no affiliate companies do that. That's weird. But if you did, and if it was that simple, then why don't we encourage people to do affiliate marketing strictly and have it to where they learn how to grow a social media platform and they learn how to share their links and market our products like that makes logical sense but there is a reason why this recruitment stuff is there and that's probably because it's highly significant so if you really don't need to then it's like why the hell is this an MLM to begin with and if you don't need to recruit it sounds unnecessary and honestly unethical and weird make it to where people can affiliate market off your products and leave it at that and if anything like me guys you will hate those post office runs in fact I used to leave people's posts parcels in Jake's car for days and forget about them there's none of that no more everyone gets their parcels in a few days now haven't they <laughs> but yeah literally the commission the support the products everything is amazing if you're on this call now right now you are on the best call of your life I promise <laughs> oh thanks Amy. um it's just everything that amy said and especially like if you've been in a business before and you get deflated and you feel unfulfilled and it's more of a chore when you're part of a community you don't have to worry about the business aspect you just have to worry about your own day-to-day -day, like using the products getting the result like my skin is incredible my weight loss is remarkable my children are on the mineral solution my husband even though he's got no hair is obsessed with the shampoo like there's just there's such a wide variety of products for everybody to find something that suits them and something that Amy missed is that they do the referral sides they do the discounts for customers it's crazy Amy isn't it like how much they've thought of that other yeah, companies definitely. don't have mm. it's not my partner Jake like every morning he's getting out of bed he was like I need to take my products first thing he says and yeah. he's never stuck at anything like He's like, he's, he's even going down his gym, like telling everyone, you come back today, like, Amy, I've got you a sale from one of my, from one of my clients who's doing carpet cleaning and tell everyone about the Ignite. <laughs> These are all testimonials, which yes, reviews, testimonials, I think can have their weight in itself. But my biggest thing is I need to see numbers. If you're promoting something and wanting me to join it, or if you're wanting anyone to join something, I would assume that you would want to have a lot of data to back up what you're doing is good, especially because in the world of network marketing and multi-level marketing, right, is there's a lot of scammy things that most of them are scams, okay? If from your perspective as a network marketer, you would have to realize that, wow, there's a lot of people that don't like my industry. How can I prove that it's good? And if there's a lot of evidence, then it's fine. It's good. The evidence backs it up. But there's not any numbers or data that's shown in these opportunity calls. And I hate that because it's so surface level. It's like, oh, well, we can pay you really good. Look at all these ways of getting paid. But when majority of these ways of getting paid, for example, are dependent on getting a team and growing that team, that's kind of cutting your chances down smaller. If you are claiming all oh, these products are good, but we're not having really good evidence to support the Google search that this person just did, where they were looking up your company and found a lawsuit against your products, that's not helping, right? So there's not enough evidence to support that this is a good idea. Looking into an opportunity that may think they can't do it or they're not good enough. So Shandell, are you there? Hi. Hi. How are you? Thanks for Hi. having me on the call, Beth. Oh, no, you're welcome. You go for it. Yeah, so sorry. I literally jumped out of bed not even an hour ago. Um, 
So, but I'm so happy to be on this call because as Amy said, like, it's just incredible. Um, I, my husband and I, my mum to five, um, soon to be a nana, which is exciting. Um, and my husband and I, we own our own company, which is quite busy. And I run all the admin side of it, which is hectic. Um, but when I spoke to Beth three months ago, when she told me about it, there was just something that I knew this was the right thing again, because I have done it previously, but walked away about five years ago because I was burnt out. My team weren't making money. There was just so many frustrations and I just thought... You see the consistency of all of these people leaving a specific MLM or any... Again, they could be coming from different MLMs, right? But see the patterns that they're explaining where they're like, wow, I was drained. My team was making no money. That is what we see with the industry. So again, if you are coming here as a top leader, other people and are saying, wow, my team was doing really badly. No one was making money. I was exhausted even. What the hell tells me that this is going to be a different company and a better one when you've already had pre-existing experiences that that replicate the exact toxic issues that we talk about when it comes to MLMs. I'm done. Like, maybe this isn't for me. So I completely had nothing to do with the industry. I did buy products um, because I always support others in network marketing and I love a lot of products. Um, I didn't get great results from them, but I just sort of kept buying them. Um, yeah, and then when Beth told me about this, I just knew that I had to come back. And I did miss the industry. Um yeah, so fast forward three months, I've found the product so easy to sell because the science is amazing. Like they sell themselves, really. Everyone is really interested in the product. It's not something you've really got to push. I'm very curious about this and I want to bring this up. So I don't feel like there's any good marketing taught or displayed when it comes to multi-level marketing promoters because there's a lot of cold messaging, very weird, just ways of sharing the product, maybe posting, but not actual marketing is being taught. So I wonder, is the product actually really good? And is she talking about this? And is it true? You know, is it actually easy to sell? Is it something that people really, really want? I mean, if any of you in the comment section have had experience, Experiences with Modere, let me know. I'd love to hear. I'm not going to judge you if you like a product or not, okay? Like, I don't like the MLM, but if you like a product, I'm, that's okay, okay? We all have our things. But I would love to know if it's actually that good or they're saying that because they're pushing this business opportunity to you. I just don't really trust that they sell themselves because at the end of the day, there's not real good marketing to split, like taught to promoters. So I don't see how well that would work out for most people, especially if marketing isn't taught to majority of people in the industry because most people in the industry don't know how to market market off something organically and properly. On to people um, because everyone has seen the chocolate on the spoon, I guess, and want to try it. So, and as far as the team, the support, like I've never experienced anything like the support we have from our team and the whole company. It's really, really incredible. I had a call two weeks ago from the manager in Australia to ring up and congratulate me on um, my sales and how far I've come in the business in such a short time and it was just like it brought tears to my eyes it was incredible he was the most beautiful man and we talked for probably 20 minutes and it was at night time so he was calling me you know in his family time probably but just really really lovely so I think anyone that thinks that they may not be able to fit this in with their busy lifestyle like my life is hectic and I thought oh my gosh how am I going to manage running a business and doing this as well. But you find time in the pockets of your spare time. It, it's not time consuming. Like previously, I think I would spend hours and hours and hours just flogging a dead horse, really. Um, but this, like, you put in the time that you've got and you'll see the results. Okay, I think that's very unrealistic for anything in general. So I don't like this argument when they, I feel like it's false across many industries. So for example, I can't sit here and do this for a living and get this started if I just randomly put in time here and there. Like for me, when I was doing this, cause I, one, I, I'm absolutely obsessed with what I do for a living. But before I even saw any like growth or anything, like I was dedicated, I was doing this. I was putting in hours and effort and I was able to do enough research and grow and become the best version of myself. And that's how I got to, where I am today and I'm very appreciative because no one had to like me but y'all did like me you subscribed so thank you so much but everything is going to require some sort of effort and work in order to get to the goals that you want at the time so when they say oh put in whatever time you can and you can do that and you can get some success I highly doubt it because how the hell do you expect someone to be able to keep up with ranks making good sales if they're here and they're putting in time like that doesn't make any sense at all and I, I just feel like that's false advertising of the opportunity because let's be real here 
when it comes to being in MLMs. A lot of people that I've talked to and a lot of my viewers who have been a part of MLMs, the amount of effort and time that y'all have put into that, oh my God, like that is terrifying how much effort you guys put into that stuff with hardly any return. This is just my opinion. I feel like talking about this is better than these other MLMs. We're different. You can fit this in any parts of your day. I'm a busy mom. I'm a busy parent. I'm a busy person and I do whatever I can and it still works out for me. I feel like what they're doing to suck you in so that way by the time you buy their starter kit, you get involved, you put some money in and you're an additional little number on their charts. All of a sudden the reality is going to hit you and they're going to be like, well, you're going to have to put in more effort if you want to hit this goal. I think it's misleading people to join. That's just my opinion. I absolutely love it. Like, it's just so heartwarming knowing that people have done this industry before, thought it's not for them, found something that just aligns with them. And it's almost as if they set their whole body on fire and everybody comes to watch. It's like, what is she doing? So platinum guys, just to let you know. What the f*** was that analogy? It's like she set herself on fire and everyone comes to watch. We could have picked someone popping a confetti popper and looking, setting off fireworks, you know? Someone screeching, like, I don't know, absolutely anything but the fire analogy. Is thousands in personal customers a month, right? Like I'm not talking a few hundred, I'm talking thousands, right? In dollars, uh, in pounds or Australian dollars a month. And to hit a direct to one, again, it's 12,000 in team volume. Like these are not easy promotions to hit. And Shandal, how long have you been in the business? I started at the end of June. There you go. So, yeah. I don't know anybody that could do that, you know, that has struggled previously to find their way within such a short amount of time. So that should be a testament to a lot of people that are thinking, I've tried this before. It's going to be the same thing. I can tell you it's not. I know Amy will. You can't make those assumptions. Where are my and small hands. I need, I need, I love these things. I'm obsessed. I don't care. You can't make that statement when the FTC says, hey, most people don't make money. Most people in the entire industry don't do good. But then you're like, we're different. No, no, no. I'm sure the FTC would have at least acknowledged those things. Okay. There is no way, especially when your numbers or your income disclosure statement are replicating the data and all the other MLMs I've seen. And again, I will be nice and I will, of course, be a, no a good logical person and acknowledge when something is true and good about an MLM. No. You can't make those statements. They're really hyping this up to an entirely different level, which to me is a characteristic of a pyramid scheme, according to the FTC, is giving these over hyped about joining this, about how this can change your life. This is going to be the answer. No, no, it's probably not. It's probably bullshit. It's probably a scam just like the other ones. And with the data showing me, it doesn't look like a lot of people are getting success. I'll tell you it's not. I know Amy will tell you that it's not who's run huge organizations and Shandal that has just completely set herself on fire. So thank you so much Shandell and I know that was really last minute for me to ask you to do that so I'm super proud of you <laughs> thank you so the last but definitely not least is my pocket rocket over in the USA she is someone that just is just straight to the point go straight for it and again has had massive success within a really really short period of time so Shelby are you there I am here perfect let's hear your story well, thanks for having me on. Uh, I know that the U.S. is definitely here to represent. I've got a couple people here on my team. But um, just to give you a little bit of background about myself, um, I'm 44. I have six kids. I um, have been in the industry on and off for over 20 years. But I'm a full-time real estate agent, so that's really my trade, like, on a regular basis. And um, Beth and I kind of knew each other when she was in a previous company and I've been following her around. She just didn't know I did on social media for the whole time. <laughs> and, um, the last company that she was in, I had reached out and we've kind of joined together and similar, similar answers, you know, like you can have a great comp plan. You can have a great owner. You can have a lot of great things, but if a product doesn't work, it's dead in the water. Very random. I know this really doesn't have anything to do with what she's talking about, but I think it's really telling when we have someone who's a real estate agent who could be doing really, really good and still getting sucked into this. And so this is why I say how anyone and everyone is susceptible to scams or getting pulled into MLMs for that matter, which is really sad. But I also, that's exactly why I harp on like, you are not stupid. Someone just needs to not be a jack to take advantage of you. Anyone can get taken advantage of. So I wonder why she's involved with this though. Cause I feel like it pushes for people even who are doing well to join in because they're like, this might give you the extra push, right? This might do a little more for you. So I wonder why she she's doing this if she has a pretty damn good job, you know? I don't know. At some point, you're not gonna retain customers. And at the end of the day, isn't that really how a business, you know, sustains itself? Um, so 
when she came over here, I was like, crap, you know, we're doing, we're going to do this again. But this time I, I really was very methodical about it. I just didn't want to do something else unless I was going to really go and do all the research. And I know, you know, you'd already done that Beth, but for my own sanity, I was just like, and I trust Beth. So it wasn't like that. It was more like for my own internal, you know, temperature gauge to say, okay, am I going to be able to feel good about sending a message to someone about a product? And then I don't, I don't want to see something in two months that says, oh, this isn't working. And it doesn't work for me, but it's worked for everybody else. It's deflating for them and me. And these are my friends, you know? And so, um, okay. So this is also why I think a lot of people that are part of the industry don't have a lot of business knowledge, because something I think that should be a really big obvious to you is you can have wonderful products, but someone is not going to like it or it's not for them. Okay. So for like, for example, Carmex, babe, I love this right? Some people hate it. I literally wear certain clothes. I wear certain jewelry. I wear certain perfumes. I have certain body lotions. Some people have reactions and they don't like it. That like not everything is for everyone and assuming that a product has to work for you or they're crazy or something is up or like that's such a bad thing I think is odd. If someone doesn't like it, that's okay because if anything, you can learn from it and grow as a business owner. If you own the business, they don't own the business, but I don't think that that's a negative thing. But also, I don't know why that's being mentioned because to me, that sounds kind of obvious. Like, why would you be like, well, I mean, I didn't want to be a part of a company that had products where not everyone's going to like it. That's the thing. Not everyone can like everyone, everything, every item, you name it. Say, I've never seen anything multiply so fast with really not a lot of work. I'm not saying I didn't done anything, but for the amount of work I put in in the previous companies, it was like, you know, you're up until one in the morning, you're on three way calls, hours and hours and hours and hours. There's no time for your family. There's barely any time for your other work that you're doing as a full time, you know, whatever you're in. And that is really like, like Amy said, you're not getting paid what you're worth. So the time that you're putting in, it's almost like pennies, you know, when you, when you look at the math, I just wasn't interested in that again. So I think some of us say, you know, we have a little bit of network marketing PTSD, and if that's you, like if you're sitting on here and you're like, gosh, I've tried this, I've done that, you know, all these people sound excited, but I can honestly say that, um, and when people say, oh, everything is different, this is way different. I can honestly say it with figures, with dollar amounts, with, with support, you know, we can show you, uh, we can get on the phone with five people right after this call. We could have five people in your chat right after this call that would say, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. And that's just the way that it is. And that was, I've never seen, I've never seen eight figure earners supporting everybody in the team. You're, they're non-existent usually. They don't even, you can't even look at them, let alone talk to them. And I, I mean, they're just people, but you know, that's just unfortunate. Sometimes that happens, but there are a lot of humble people in this business. I love that it's run by a woman um, because women understand women and men seem to lose weight faster than women. And that's unfair in itself. Uh, but I love the owner, how she's focused on, you know, hormonal issues and menopause and thyroid issues and things that people kind of, that group kind of gets left out when you do weight loss product. Okay. Yes. However, don't look to a company CEO to give you resolutions to that. If you have access to it, go to medical professionals, get advice from medical professionals, because I wouldn't just trust a CEO to give me the answers to everything for my health. I would want to know from an actual medical standpoint, what I needed, because my needs are going to be different than yours and vice versa. So that right there makes no logical sense to me. Additionally, she was talking about, oh, we have figures to prove that this company is different. Please, let's ask the everyday average person working with there how much they're making. Let's look at that. Again, the income disclosure statement, your own income disclosure statement says otherwise. So again, no. <laughs> and so I love that it helps everyone. For me personally, um, I've had some health struggles and the life um, collagen has been a lifesaver, literally lifesaver for me. Um, you know, I was kind of like, no way collagen help with pain. Like I was completely uneducated on what collagen really was for other than just looking good. Right. And so I was really excited that. And then when I started sharing that story, I had people saying, Oh, you know, all my joints really hurt Would this help with that. My knees really hurt Would that help Would that help. And four days after they're trying it, they're like, uh, I didn't believe you, but I'm a believer. I, I can't, I can move my fingers. I can, I can walk down the stairs and you know, weight loss is important, but so is the functionality of your daily, like well-being. Like if you're not, if you can't barely get out of bed and you can barely move, like you're miserable at work, you're miserable as a mom, you're miserable as a spouse. 
Okay, yes, but again, why are we getting on here using this as a testimonial for someone to randomly act as if the company's products can make changes? Like that's medical claims right there. That's another huge red flag is falsely displaying information, talking about medical claims and just randomly spewing it all. A lot of these companies, I swear, they push the most unhinged medical claims ever. Now again, collagen is a different story. I take collagen, love it, great. Acting as if, oh yeah, some people are miserable, you can't get out of bed, you can't do X, Y, and Z. And then being like, well, but Modere has helped with with medical issues and has helped with health and wellness. There's just, I don't trust that in any capacity. And what I've always run into every damn time I talk about new MLM, I get new information after. Meaning like, oh, hey, remember that clinically proven product? It wasn't, here's the evidence to it. You know what I mean? Or, oh, remember that product? Look at the horrible reviews about it. You know, you see what I'm saying? Or the dangerous ingredients. So I don't have a lot of trust in it. If it's good, great, but I don't have a trust from it for the get-go because of how they're marking it off. So the product for me were the main factor here but then the comp plan let me just put it this way um the first month i really didn't i i did i did work okay but i did kind of the same the second month that i did the first month when it comes to activity level and my pay was almost four times more so where in the world are you going to find that kind of multiple? Okay, but where is that coming from? It has to come from somewhere. Does it mean that your team maybe made more sales? Like what happened to make that happen? Like this is, there's no true evidence being displayed right now. This, this is really driving me crazy because like, sure, you can say, hey, I made more money this next month. Okay, great. Wh- what is the source though? That's what I want to know. What is the source? Is there a specifically more people getting recruited? Are your downloads just selling a ton? Again, if that would be the case though, and you put in just as much work, but more people are on your team and more people are putting in more effort that's depending then on a team for that income which is highly unethical and not fucking normal in any capacity okay i'm gonna stop this right here because this has been definitely been long enough to say the least comment down below your personal experiences with modare if you have any other information you can email it to me at isabella at gmail.com i will see you guys in the next video bye